Quick question coming up you can test yourself with on intermolecular forces and boiling points. Here it is, so if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so I've highlighted the key bits of information. Both of these molecules have got 18 electrons. They've got quite different boiling points and we've got to explain that in terms of bonding and structure. So the first thing we'll do is just get the bonding and structure out of the way. They're both covalently bonded and they both have simple molecular structures. So to boil both of these molecules, we've got to overcome the intermolecular forces that exist between them. In the case of the fluorine molecule, that's a non-polar molecule, so it's just got induced dipole intermolecular forces. Whereas HCl, with it being polar, it's also got permanent dipole intermolecular forces. Remember, all molecules have induced dipole intermolecular forces. But because they've both got 18 electrons, it's going to have to be down to the sort of relative strength of the permanent dipole forces in the HCl molecules compared to the induced dipole forces between the um, F2 molecules. So we just need to say something like this. The permanent dipole intermolecular forces between the HCl molecules are stronger than the induced dipole intermolecular forces between the fluorine molecules and therefore more energy is needed to break the intermolecular forces between the HCl molecules and hence its higher boiling point.